Thank you, Madam Chair. Director Ray, good to see you uh, again as always, and thank you for your service to our country. Director Ray, last year, um, as uh, chairman of the Homeland Security and Government Affairs Committee, uh, I released uh, a report on the watch listing and screening processes at airports. Uh, the, and uh, the report raised concerns about uh, the watch list, including who it is uh, shared with, uh, its implementation, its oversight, as well as uh, the redress uh, process. In particular, the report found insufficient transparency, lack of a holistic approach to screening, and no meaningful options to resolve concerns for Americans who believe that they were misidentified or subject uh, the subject to uh, discrimination. Certain communities, such as Muslim, Arab, and South Asian Americans, report uh, disparate screening during their travel and the breakdown in trust over the inability to redress uh, the process. Certainly, I think you agree the administration, uh, including the FBI, must uh, effectively target our resources to protect our country from terrorism, first and foremost, but we also need to respect uh, the rights of, uh, of innocent uh, Americans uh, as well. So my question for you, sir, is I, I believe you're familiar with this report, and what, what steps have you taken to ensure that there's more transparency, especially to Congress, about the watch list and other data sets maintained by the terrorist uh, screening center as recommended in the report that my committee published? So certainly I, I agree, uh, as you stated, that uh, it's important that the database be used to protect our national security and at the same time uh, respect uh, civil liberties. Um, and no one is placed on the watch list solely because of race, ethnicity, national origin, religious affiliation, or any First Amendment protected activities. And there is a, a rigorous interagency process. There are continuous review and quality control measures. We're constantly taking advantage of new methods and technologies to strengthen those processes. And while the FBI and the TSC, as I know you, you know because of your other, your other role, are not responsible for the actual travel screening, we do work diligently with uh, the interagency to try to make sure we're maintaining a current and accurate watch list. Recently, uh, the TSC published a, uh, put out a comprehensive document about the watch list process, which includes everything from the process for nominations, the use of the list, uh, quality assurance measures, and uh, to the heart of your question, the redress procedures. And so our hope is that that document strikes the balance of the two issues that you mentioned in terms of uh, providing more transparency about all those processes so that people know how it works, know how they can challenge if they, if they have something that they want to challenge, uh, while at the same time not compromising our national security. Uh, ironically, some of the transparency around this process could itself uh, infringe on people's privacy and civil liberty because of you know who it identifies in a way that maybe they wouldn't want being identified. Right, it is always a careful balance, but we have to continue to work. We've been working with your team. We hope we can continue to, to do that. Uh, and it's been a particular issue uh, in Detroit Airport, for example, for reasons you and I have right. discussed uh, uh, many times. Um, Director Ray, we, we have seen uh, historic spikes in anti-Semitic, anti-Muslim and anti-Arab American hate incidents, uh, certainly driven by the, the war between Israel and Hamas. Uh, we're also seeing rising anti-immigrant rhetoric, which is in the past has inspired domestic terror attacks in Pittsburgh and El Paso, for example. DOJ has also announced it's investigating dozens of violent threats against election workers uh, and has already convicted 13 individuals. And as you said earlier, you're increasingly concerned about the potential for a coordinated foreign uh, terrorist attack uh, here in the homeland. So the threat of uh, terrorist attack is high, uh, and we don't know what will inspire the next attack or, or where it will happen. But my question for you is, uh, given all of these threats, how is the FBI now prioritizing resources to protect these communities from these very threats? Well, uh, you covered a, a waterfront because there's a waterfront to right. threats. Um, we, uh, so to start with on the terrorism side, terrorism, which includes both um, foreign terrorism and domestic terrorism, uh, remains our number one priority. That has not changed. Uh, and that drives uh, prioritization within all the field offices for one thing. Second, uh, we, uh, a couple years ago, elevated civil rights, specifically including hate crimes, to what we call a national threat priority. And the effect of that is to drive prioritization in, the, in all the field offices. 
Uh, in addition, we created, I created uh, a few years ago, uh, something that we call the Domestic Terrorism Hate Crimes Fusion Cell because what I found was that sometimes the same act of, of violence could be considered either a hate crime or an act of domestic terrorism. In many ways, it's the same type of, of attack. It's just two different legal structures. And in the FBI, the criminal investigative division, you know, we have people who focus on hate crimes, and then, we, of course, we have people who focus on the national security side on terrorism. And so the, this fusion cell that I created brought the two groups together to ensure both that nothing slips through the cracks, but also maybe more importantly to try to see if we can better anticipate and to be more proactive to prevent these attacks in the first place as to solely responding after they tragically occur. And I'm proud of some of the work that was done, including uh, I think for the first time ever a uh, couple years ago now, a, uh, a proactive hate crimes charge that disrupted an attack against a synagogue um, I believe it was in Nevada, but it could have been in Colorado because there's one of each. Um. Right. Thank you.